If it's the first time you use Soundtrap, try clicking join now in educational use and putting your teacher's email and then you click get started. Once you click get started, you'll then have to erase that and put in your username to your school email. And if that doesn't work, then go back all the way to the beginning, click join now and click personal and then do a Google login with your school email as a backup way to get into Soundtrap. This is your school email you put here. Once you're logged in, pretty much everything we do in Soundtrap is in Studio. So we're going to click on Studio here. Soundtrap works in layers. So we'll add a track that will be our voice track. We'll add a track that could be our music track. We can add a track that might be sound effects. And maybe we have several tracks going at the same time to create a layered environment. So let's do that. I'm going to click a plus button here. So if I'm going to record over the microphone, so this is if I am, I am recording my laptop computer microphone. This may be just me talking. This may be on my phone playing music. So if I click on the microphone, and remember that this gear box here is to allow access to microphone. You need to do that if you haven't done that already for the very first time. And then you here see reverb. I'm going to drop reverb all the way to zero. I can adjust volume if it's too loud or too quiet. I click start button. And then here I'm recording. And this could be me talking. This could also be music that I'm playing like on a phone or a secondary device that I play out loud. Okay. This also could be me recording Zoom. So this could be that my Zoom session is going right now and I'm recording me and everybody hearing the dialogue that's coming over somebody else's speaker to, uh, microphone to, over to your speaker. So it's recording your speaker picking up their Zoom dialogue. Something you have to do as a quick collaborative shortcut. Let's stop. When I'm done with this, I will click X. Just a quick tip before I leave. If for some reason the audio wasn't coming through, that it was like you recorded it but nothing came out, then what you can do is you'll click on the microphone here and you should check to see if it's on the right microphone. Typically, we're always going to be on built-in microphone here, not the Zoom dialog. The Zoom um, audio device doesn't always work. So we're going to default to microphone. So even if you're recording a Zoom dialog, it's largely going to be them playing over the speaker and you picking up on your mic, which means that when you're recording it with microphone, unless it's just you talking, you need to not wear earphones. So I'll say it again, you need to not wear earphones because your speaker is picking up the sound that the microphone then needs. I'll click X and there's my track. I can move it around, I can pull the edges to trim it. If I need to cut in the middle of the track, I double click to make sure I've highlighted it. It turns a little darker when it's highlighted and I click edit and I can split region and then I can splice in the middle of just some of the iMovie here, and I can split in the middle of the region. On the, the layers here, I can adjust the audio if it needs to be louder or softer. Double click here to name the, name the track. I can also, under three dots here, I can import further audio. So let's say on the same audio level, is a student project that somebody sent you a file. So let's say like somebody was working at home and they sent you the audio to import in. So I'll just look for that audio. Let's add another track. Let's say this track is something I'm just directly importing off the computer. So let's say it, this is a song. So remember I said, earlier I said I can record some music by having my microphone playing and then picking up a secondary device's sound or picking up Zoom sound from somebody else on and on the zoom. Another way to do it is to import file. So import file. So let's say I'm playing a song from YouTube. So remember that we need remember to keep track of all your sources so you can cite it in your credits. And then let's say I'm going to play this and I'm going to go to quit time. And then what I'll do is I'll go with audio recording and I'll record this audio of this from YouTube. For the musicians out there, you can also do your own music using the synthesizers. And then there's the loop library, which is amazing for everybody. If I click on the loop library here, there is built-in sound effects, so you can use your internal sound effects here, search for them, or there are built-in beats to your instrumental tracks to use in your story however you wish. You see down here, there is a also uh, a, um, a record button down here. This button is if you want to lay down a track while listening to all the other tracks. That can only really work is if you're listening with earphones. So again, 
Um, earphones are the tricky things to remember. If you're trying to record sound coming out of your speaker, you can't wear earphones because your speaker doesn't play if you have earphones on. However, if you're just trying to record your voice and you want to actually hear the tracks that have already been laid down, then clicking this record button here will play all the tracks while you record. When you're ready to click save, save when you're ready to save, click save, and it's got a render, which means that once you're saving the project, you'll see it's going to be mixed for a while. And once it's done mixing, a little drop down arrow means you're ready to download. So you can't download a project to turn in the file until it's done mixing. So you click save and then it renders. You also, you can share your project with your classmates so that they can work on it, kind of like Google Docs, but it's not live. It's kind of walkie talkie style in the sense that you click save, it renders, and they can see it. And then they click save, it renders, and then you can see it. So that's how that shared feature works. Alternatively, people can just email you their files and the US, the master editor, can then import those files and then do the tweaking this way.